I'm Steph. I'm Michael. Today we're going to show off Biblio's Quill and Parchment. Yes. This new roll and write from Dr. Finn's Geeks. Dr. Finn. So this came in a Kickstarter that had four different Dr. Finn's games. Uh, had um, Mining Colony, uh, Parban... Parban... Manga Parbat. Manga Parbat. <laughs> That's like... You weren't even close. I'm like... <laughs> and the Butterfly Guard. <laughs> The Butterfly Garden. And this is the third edition. one that we've played. Yeah, we still haven't played The Mining Colony. Correct. So that will be next. Well, that was the hard one for me to really remember, so I wanted to make sure I got that one right. right. And then I'm like, nah, I can't remember. So this is not... Parba Nangbat. No, that's not right. Nanga Parbat. So yeah. This is not related to the other Biblios games. Yes, so this that's very totally important different. to know. This is not Biblios. <laughs> this is not Biblios Dice. This is not a retheming of either of those. This is something completely different. Correct. Uh, so, now, yeah. it, there is a dice involved, so yes. it's a roll and write. <laughs> now, one word of warning for those of you who like to stack your games certain ways. I know that Team Horizontal and Team Vertical are both represented out there in uh, <laughs> uh, on the stream and in uh, YouTube land. Keep in mind that the Biblio side, it can be oriented both horizontally and vertically. However, there are three sides that look like a book. So if you plan on storing it like this, you're not going to have a name visible. I know, right? That's how I normally store it too. If you and for, the for small games, games, you like store this. it like this. You no. don't store it like this. No. But you do. You store most of your games like this anyway. So it looks like a nice book, and that's fine. However. Yes. Team horizontal. <laughs> Jenna, <laughs> team horizontal. Yes. Oh no, we're getting into this again. As you do. No. <laughs> well, I. So I know that she stores her important games horizontally, so at least I feel better. <laughs> All right, so this plays from one to four players. Oh, you play no. it solo. Yeah, you can play it solo. If you play it two player, you're gonna we're gonna play it as if there was a, a magical third magical third player named Cadfail. And I don't know if that has if that name has some significance, but C A D F A E L. And if you're playing solo, you're also going to be playing against Cadfael. So, okay. Yes. Cool. So we're going to be playing it with Cadfael's help. So yeah. Um. So let's go ahead and take a look at this fantastic game. Ooh, okay. So we played a lot of these when we were um, when we were at. Uh, over at John and Laney's. Yeah, a lot of so games. So we played a ton of... How many games did you finally figure out that you had played just over the weekend? I didn't check. You didn't check? Mm -hmm. I thought you thought it was... I, if I had to guess, I would say probably 30, 25, yeah, 30 games. it was at least 30. And many of them knew. So they're going to end up on our list on Friday. Friday is going to be Steph's Hodgepodge, where we're going to like talk about all of the games that we loved last month. <laughs> yeah. So, and uh, hey, many of these games that you see over the next few weeks are probably going to be on the list tomorrow. So that might give you extra reason to check out the stream for the next little while. Mm -hmm. So, um, this game is split up into eight days. Uh, and it's actually two different periods of four days each. So, uh, we have got the monastery uh, set up with side A up. There is a B side that will basically change these different actions and what they can do and change some of these chapel bonuses. So, uh, we are trying to uh, scribe certain books in order to go up on these tracks. The gray one there that you see there right here is, this is all green through here, though you can't really tell it. Um, but the first one to get to the top of each track is going to get some points. Um, and you are going to be moving your little uh, novice helper uh, along the path and visiting cities and doing good deeds. And you are going to bid for the abbot's influence and uh, uh, do some of, you know, build up this cross. Which I think that's what they call that's for. A, that's what they call really good hard deeds. to build up this cross. It's, yeah. I actually got a couple of them. Um, which is really hard to do. Um, and we are, since we are students, we're trying to get to the front of the chapel. It's like go to the head of the class, except it's like go to the head of the yeah. chapel. Uh, and we're basically just trying to race forward 
uh, into the chapel. Uh, Chad says, roll the dice, write some stuff, do the points. <laughs> that is quite accurate. <laughs> I can't I can't say he's wrong. It is true. Roll the dice, mark some stuff, get the points. It's a rolling mark for you. Yeah, it's a, and what are, what are some of your favorite sort of games, Steph? Roll and rights. Roll and rights. So, each player is going to have six dice. Uh, you're going to have... Uh, what are these dice called? Um, you've got um, influence dice, which it, we're going to use to influence the abbot. We've got book dice that we're going to use to scribe the books. And we have uh, a travel die that you, it's where you're going to send your novice monk to go out to find books and do good works. Um, the book dice show one of each of the book symbols plus... A chapel symbol, and that's how we move forward on the chapel. For every, every time that you roll a book symbol, you mark off one of your book rows. Every time you roll a chapel symbol, you are going to advance up the chapel rows. That's right. So, all players are going to roll their six dice. Before we do that, though, we are going to roll three dice for Cadfael, and we are going to mark his rows. Um, that's all he's going to do. We're, we don't really score any points for Cadfael. However, uh, if he rolls chapel symbols, we are going to move him forward in the chapel. Uh, if he gets to the top of a book row, we are going to mark uh, the five, three, and two in order to block one of the two of us from possibly getting uh, points. So the first person to the top of a track will get five points. Second place gets three. Third place gets two. Cad fail can block that. Um, Cad fail can also, um, if he gets to the front of the chapel before we do, neither of us is going to get the 10 point bonus for getting there. So, um, so we're going to, uh, Steph and I, after Cad fail goes, we're going to roll our dice and then we are going to decide whether we are going to re-roll all of them, one of them, or none of them. Those are your three options. You can't roll two dice. You can roll all, all but uh, all of them, one of them, or none of them. Sad. So what we're <laughs> supposed to do, and we were sort of lax about this when we played it with uh, John and Laney. We we're supposed to go. Um. Oh, what is it? It's like a one, two, three sort of thing, and you go one, two, three, point to the die you're wanting to roll. Or one, two, three, I'm not going to roll anything. Or one, two, three, I'm going to roll all of them. I think we're just going to do it on our it's, own. And it should be fine for us to do it that way. Um, and so if we, uh, then we're going to resolve our dice. Uh, and we can do that simultaneously. Um, yeah, open hand to reroll all, a finger point to a die or a closed fist saying no more rolling for me. Um, and I... That's supposed to be done so that I don't look at Steph and say, oh, she's going to go ahead, go ahead on the pink track. I don't need to worry about my pink dice anymore. That's a lot of evaluation for a not-so-serious game, I think. Right. I agree. And I'm, I'm not going to, like, majorly pay attention. I might pay attention to you between rounds or something. Say, oh, yeah, you're you're going further on the green track. Yeah. Um, but I'm not going to do it in the middle of dice rolling. Anyway, we can do that up to three times Yahtzee style, basically. Um... And so then we're going to do these in any order we want. First, we're going to, uh, you probably go ahead and take the influence dice. Whatever this sums to, that's how much influence you get to write on the influence track. For the first half of the game. Yeah. that that This is all, all for period one. The, all of these steps that I'm talking about are just for the four days in period one. Yes. So we're going to roll these. We're going to subtract. And we're going to add. So I'm going to add eight on the first day and then uh i might roll i might only uh, that would be pretty sad only getting six for the second day uh these are just standard d6s you're just trying to get as much as you can because you are going to all this influence that we're collecting we are going to spend during the second period to in order to be able to claim sets of dice uh and so dice dice drafting i know you love dice drafting so I do. Um, that will really uh, make things interesting. So um, if you uh, have any of these book dice, you're going to mark them off. 
Um, if you're the first player to complete a stack of books, like I said, you're going to get the bonuses. Um, if something is already completed, I can't remember what happens with that. Steph, help me out. Um, so. Oh, Abbott's option. Here it is. If you have a die for a completed stack. Um, if you're unable to use a book die or a travel die, you, you can do one of two things. You can move your novice on the little novice map. Yeah. You basically are crossing them off as you go. There's right. Little or tiny bonuses. Not, not there yet. Or you can perform a good deed, which is marking one of the circles in the cross. And that's how I ended up starting to get that. Because I went straight to the top on the pink track. That's true. And then every time I got a pink book, I could mark these off. These are two points apiece. That's not bad. That's a really good little bonus to get. Um, so whenever you uh, handle the travel die, which is the last die I haven't spoken about, you're going to move the novice one, two, or three spaces. There are also, let's see, there are... There are a lot of different faces with two. One dot, one space with one, one space with three, and one space with one and a star. Whenever you have a one and a star, you can mark off one of the stars up here and the corresponding book of your choice. Now, if you've already gotten this one as a freebie, you're not getting the red as a freebie again. And that's basically what that side of the travel die is for. So we're going to lather, rinse, and repeat that for four rounds. Uh, oh, one last thing about the chapel. Um, we actually need to um, decide how we're standing on the first part of the chapel. And the way that they say it is from oldest to youngest, we're going to write these. That I guess you could do it that way. However, that's not really it. Um, so, I am supposed to write a square as my symbol because there's a square on this A side here. Um, this one that is not being used as a triangle. Steph here has a circle and Cadfael has a little um, quill, wand, a call. quill. Yes. They call them, uh, what is it, hats, oh, the coins. Hats is, triangle, yeah. hats is the triangle. Quills, coins, and... Books? Parchment. Yes. Bo uh, parchment? Paper? Paper, I think. Something. So. Um, I'm just putting M for Michael S for stuff, and then he'll be is that Is that very, is that seeable? I guess that's fairly seeable yeah. on here. It's true. Welcome to the Roland Rights. Yes. Exactly. So. <laughs> Steph loves her some Roland Rights for sure. Um, so. For going to chapel, everyone with uh, a chapel die now moves up one pew. The player furthest from the altar is going to get to move first, followed by the second furthest, and then and then whoever's closest to the altar will then finish up that movement. Now, if everyone is on the same row, which we are at the moment, the one furthest to the right is considered furthest back. So, uh, Cadmion would go first, then Steph and then I would get to go, which might make me further back than Steph at some point. If we both rolled two dice, she'd put an S in these first two spots. I would put an M in these two spots. And now you will be slightly closer. Uh, and so if there are any tiebreaker things that have to happen, then you are going to get advantage for that. Mm -hmm. So what are you doing? Nothing. Oh, you're adjusting the sound i see so the chapel is also going to provide bonuses at the end of the game you are either going to get one three six or ten points depending on how far up the chapel you go also whenever you pass by these little question mark spots you're going to roll the book die and whatever bonus you get is what you get no re-rolls or anything so uh then we're going to lather rinse and repeat now for period two uh we are going to roll a number of dice to fill up the number of rows according to the number of players, including CAD fail. Right. So, um, and we're only going to roll two book dice, a travel die, and this is called the embellishment die. Oh, this is a brand new mechanic here. So, uh, notice these pretty colored dice right here. These correspond to the five different colors of books. Currently, they are set and these are set at the start of the game not rolled they are set to four three three two two 
basically this is going to give a multiplier to the person who has uh, the most books scribed of that color times some other sort of multiplier. So let's say I was all the way to the top of the blue row and I've already gotten the blue bonus and everything, which means no matter what Steph does, I am going to be in the lead. Even if she gets all of them and gets the smaller bonus, I got there first. So at the end of the game, I'm going to get three times the value of that blue die. Uh, Steph, if she gets second place, will get two times the value of the blue die. And whoever is in third place gets one time the value of the blue die. If you're playing with four players, one half times the value of the blue die rounded down. I actually hurt myself with that once. Because <laughs> it was, I turned something from a four to a three and then ended up with a half, which gave me one point. Whoops. That was so bad. Whoops. <laughs> But for purposes, so, we do have a dummy player we do have a dummy to player check to... on majorities for that, for right. those colors. So. Exactly. So, what does the embellishment die do? Well, it relates to all of these dice here uh, at, the, uh, at the top of each book, uh, for each of these book colors. Uh, if I roll a plus, I can turn, rotate one of them up one spot. If I roll a uh, two pluses, I can move... Uh, one up two or two up one. Uh, I'm looking to see if there's a minus. There is not a minus by itself. There is a plus and a minus. So I'm going to rotate one up and I'm going to rotate one down. So um, that's what's going to happen with this. So um, yeah, Twitch streams have really benefited from rolling rights because we got we get to play these with you guys. I don't think it's really good. So, not this one. Not this game. But many. But yeah. many games. So uh, we're going to roll three different sets. And you notice each of these sets has something a little bit different with each one. The first one has the first row has the embellishment die. The second row has the ability to rotate one of your book dice to the chapel face. One of them allows your novice to move one space along the track. And one of them allows you to re-roll a book die. Oh, hey. Did I mention when you move these little guys? Sometimes there are decisions to be made because if you notice, here's where the where the uh, novice starts out, and you can travel along this top path or the bottom path. Uh, you can branch out along the way or go the long way around collecting more books. Now, this way, we'll get to the extra cities faster. At the end of the game, you're going to get two, five, or ten victory points at the end of the game based on how many of these cities you went to as well as have all those little uh, books that have been collected along the way. So, um, the special thing about period two is that, hey, remember all that Abbott influence you collected? Now you're going to start spending it by doing a blind bid. I'm going to put my hand over my bid for day five, for example, because this is days five through eight that we do period two. I'm going to write down a value. Steph's going to write down the value. We're going to reveal it at the same time. And if there is a tie, whoever's farthest ahead in the chapel gets priority. Um, we are going to subtract that influence and we're going to claim a row of dice and handle whatever dice that we have. Then the next person will go and the next person will go. Uh, lather, rinse, and repeat that for four days for period two. Whoever has uh, the most in book bonuses and the novice travel. Uh, let's see, we have, we have book bonuses. We have novice travel. We have any of these good deeds uh, that went on times two points apiece. Whatever remaining influence that we have, we're going to score basically one point for every four left. They're not going to get a lot, but we're going to get some. Um, we are going to get all of our book stack multipliers times the uh, value shown on the die. And most points wins. Hey, just like all the other Dr. Finn's games, each of these games has a free uh, promo expansion inside. I don't know if it's just the Kickstarters or if it's all of them. I'm not sure. I am not sure, but, but it did come in the box. So, and I, I didn't see a Kickstarter specific thing on the box, but it is possible. However, if you do get a hold of a Kickstarter copy, you will be getting, uh, 
this expansion in here. And Steph and I have not played with it before, but it doesn't seem too difficult uh, to do. So at the basically at the end of each uh, day or round, um, we will have a chapel card that we can bid on. So each day, the player whoever's closest to the altar will draw and look at this. Or no, it says draw and reveal. Um, she then says how much influence she would spend to gain the card's benefit. And then the other players take turns going from closest to furthest from the altar to either pass, match, or raise the amount of influence. Um, if you pass, you're not going to get it. If you, if you match, then if you were later with matching, you will get that benefit. So for example, here is this, uh, you basically get one travel action you know, one space. Not worth a lot, but you might be able to spend a little bit of influence for it. So, or you might want to. Uh, looks like there is basically one for each different action. You've got your chapel die, uh, the different sides of the book dice. You've got a, a, a single travel and an embellishment plus minus. So, uh, does seem fairly interesting. And it, like I say, it's another way to spend that influence. Uh, and gives the... To be honest, it's it's better to be a little later um, because, you know, you get a lot more power. If I bid zero, which you can do both on the spending of the influence here, if you don't care which one you draft, you could bid zero. Uh, you can also bid zero on these. Um, but if I do, if I say zero and then you say zero, you get it. At least according to what we can interpret from the, uh, from the rules here. So, um... Whoever bid the highest or match the highest bid wins the card, earns the benefit, and pays the stated amount of influence. Or is it, do you think it's whoever got the highest and everyone who matched it? I that thought, might I, be what it I is. I thought that's what it was, but I just don't know. It might be what it is. And we can play it that way. Like if I bid zero and you bid one, I don't get it, but you do. If I bid one and you bid one, we both get it, I'm guessing. Bid or you can one. bid two to keep it from me. That's, that's what I would say. That seems like it would work. Also, each of the Kickstarter games has a little wooden token inside it, and they're different for all four of the games. And this basically gives an additional thing that, uh, additional rule that someone could possibly use. Uh, and on Board Game Geek, there is a thread for each of these Dr. Uh, Finn games that uh, is solicit that the threads are soliciting. Uh, suggestions for how to use this token we haven't i haven't really looked online to see what people have chosen for this um but it is something that you don't you don't have to use at all if you don't want to well we're going to go ahead and use the chapel cards put that right there so probably too long of an explanation for what this game really needs because it's really pretty easy yeah so. so you roll them first yes we roll those first and then just go ahead and apply them However they land. Oh, he's already going up in the chapel. Or does he Does he do that now? Let's take a look at that real quick. Do, 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 do. Well, he does break ties. Oh, anyway. follow the same turn order moves for moving in the chapel. So mark his book steps. If he rolls a chapel, set it aside for use in phase three. So yes. Oh, he is farthest behind, so it doesn't matter. Yeah. He's going to go first anyway. Uh Oh, oh, I forgot to mention this. Oh, hey, look at... Look at my book stacks here. There's a minus three and a minus two, minus two, minus one, minus one. If you don't hit this level, you are not getting any positive points at the end of the game. Yeah. Until you mark off this book. That's what ruined me. Did it? Did it really? I came in second to Lainey because... Be like, because of that. Because of that. Lainey was the queen of Quill and Parchment for sure. Yeah, she won that. Yeah, she kicked butt. So, yeah... You want to be able to at least cross through that minus three. All right, let's do this. So, Cad Fail has basically already done his thing. So, uh, oh, hey, we're using these fantastic dice trays from the uh, Chai T for Two Kickstarter. There's only a couple days left on that. A couple days way. left. Jump in if uh, if you guys have forgotten. Um, but yeah, there's like tw there's like twelve different styles to choose from now. I'm rerolling. All You're rerolling all of them. Uh, I have a four and a two. Which is not great. I should probably reroll all of them, and I will. Ooh. I'm gonna just roll one of these. Oh, a six and a five. Yes, for 
Sure. Wow. You know what? I am going to re-roll. I am going to re-roll only one. But which one is it? I think I am going to re-roll this red die here. Ugh. And it stays red. So now we're going to mark these off. Oh, I got no chapels, by the way. It looks like you're already going up on the chapel track. Yeah. Doop, doop, doop. I got a little star on my, my novice dude. I did, too. Wow. Yeah. I think I'm going to take it in blue. Make sure to write your 11. My 11? Oh, yeah. I do get on 11. I like the 11. Mm-hmm. So, um, we reveal a chapel card. Mm-hmm. And it is a brain. Gray brain. Who's that? You are furthest ahead on the chapel. I get to match, pass, or raise. And we it's not like we go back and forth. We have one chance. I'll bid. According to this, we have each person has after each person has a turn, the player who bid the highest or matched does the da 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 da. I'll bid one. You'll bid one? Um, I'll bid two to keep you from it. Wow. Boop. Down to nine. Boop. That Did stinks. it. stinks. Next, you rolled them. Next, I'm going to roll Cadfail. Uh. Cadfail. Cadfail. Uh, he is, no, he is not farthest behind. So, uh, uh, uh. I'm going to say it again. He is not farthest behind. So we wait until the chapel thing happens. I am currently farthest behind in the chapel. Okay. So mine will happen first as McFirsterson's. So we're going to leave that up there for him. You guys are really quiet. Oh, yeah, this is like trash. I'm going to roll it again. I'm rolling it all again because bleh. Because bleh. There's no way I should roll these again. I will roll one of them again. I will roll one of them again. Well, I need to get further up on that track. Boo! Mm -hmm. At least I got an 11 with my dice. Me too. Every time. You. Every time me? I'm still... I'm going to roll. I'm going to roll that. Yep. All right. This is what I got. Uh, so 11 and 9 makes 20, but I'm going to hold off on writing it in here until after our cha our uh, chapel card. So I get two of these. Thank goodness I covered that up. And hey, I also have a, tra a chapel. So I am going to get to move up. Then he is going to get to move up. And then you do not have one. Sadly. Sadly. Oh, I forgot to do my little novice. I could do my should do my novice here. Um, 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 um. I should probably take a red bloop and move my novice along the road. All right, what are we bidding on? Uh, we are bidding on. The embellishment die. Well, that's not going to help us, so zero. It's not going to help us. What do you mean? Uh, I guess I, we can use it? Yeah. Oh. Uh, yeah. We'll I cho will choose not to bid zero. You will choose not to bid zero. I'm choosing to bid zero. You're choosing to bid zero? I'll go ahead and do one, so I have 19 mm -hmm. left. Raise something up one. Raise some, uh, Lower something down one. Or do you roll the die? Mm. Hard to say. I, I, I Well, with all the other ones, it's got a symbol. That's true. Okay, so let's go I with assume that. it's a plus minus. Yeah, it doesn't say on there. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, let me relook here. Well, we are fairly equal with everything. I know, that's why I said it doesn't matter. <laughs> um, I'm going to increase this to a four, and you are ever so slightly ahead of me on pink, so I'm going to lower that down to a two. What 
Whatever. Whatever, Michael. Hmm. Mm. <laughs> Day three, fight. Fight. Cad fail rolls. Whoops. Come on, two churches. Two chapels. Wow. wow and a right. pink. Hmm. Very even. One of everything. He does have one of everything, which scares me a little bit. I have no greens at the moment, so <clears throat> I can't believe Cadfail is uh, just zooming up the uh, chapel track here. Oh, I've got a three on my influence. No, 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 no. <laughs> one, two, three. I'm rolling them all. <laughs> oh, it looks like you like yours. Not You're rolling really. one. Okay, I'm gonna roll one. Again. Eight is not horrible. I mean, this is like a really average roll, but I don't want to. I don't want to screw everything up by rolling it all and getting like a two. It would be really bad. I mean, I mean, sure, I'll take this. I guess. No church for you. No church for me. I wanted a church. So he goes first, boo. Yeah, there that hurt. And I roll something. Uh so does he. Does he? Uh yeah. He oh. hit the he hit the question mark. He gets a great. I get hands. You get hands. Alright, I haven't marked off mine because you like blaze down ahead, so <laughs> It's all my fault. Let let me let me catch up because I'm I'm barely where you are. All right, I've reached a city. Woo! You're beating me. I'm beating you. Really? It's amazing. I mean, I would I did take the shortcut. So, uh, chapel card. Chapel card is a green sprig. Um. You're furthest ahead. I bid one. You bid one. Uh, I will bid two. Keeping it away from you. That's the way I'd do it. Yeah. Um. So 19 and 6 is 25. All right. That's, that's, oh, yeah, you bid eight. Yeah, I bid. Oh, I bid. Gotcha. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. Got it. You got it. All right, day four, fight. Pink and red and green. Wow, he is very, very even. I mean, as you would expect from a player who rolls once. <laughs> so, but yes. Rolling these, that is just Oh, I got horrible. double ones. I'm going to try and re-roll that. <laughs> Slap a like. <laughs> Unless it counts as 11, which would have been better. That's, yeah, that's not going to happen. You didn't roll that much better, though. No, I rolled a four total. Eight is better. But I did roll three travel. Oh, nine, but it's a random random crap here. One more roll. No. I will roll a single die. So bad. Looks like I chapeled up. I might as well roll uh well I'll i I'll hold off on my chapel. I got nine. I got a green sprig. I got a gray brain. I got a chapel. Yeah, finally up to the first point. So this is a re-roll, right? That is not a re-roll. It is a a roll. It is and a And you get roll. whatever yeah. random thing you get. All right, let's do I'm it. fairly sure. I'm going to double check. I'm fairly sure that's what it is. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. I'm going to get it again. Yeah, if it's a question mark, circle it, roll a book die. I just crossed through it. Right what you did? Roll it again. Oh, how about another one? That worked. You are going to hit the 10. Like almost, roll almost it, assuredly. Running up, running up the track. Yep. Now, she is, you know, getting hurt with these chapel cards. Yeah. But she's furthest ahead on here. So I think this does balance things out a little bit. Sure. What's this? It's, it looks like it's red. I bid two. You gonna bid two? Mm-hmm. Do I want you to have it at two? I mean you are you are a slight bit ahead of me on the influence. No. But you are. You're a slight bit ahead of me. 
Uh, I'll let you have it for two. Success. You did it. You drove me out. You're like, no. <laughs> what was it? A green? Uh, red? Red. Yes, it was a red. You have now tied Cadfael. Okay. okay. <laughs> All right, okay. now we are going to roll two dice and a travel die. Now, here's some rules with Cadfael, um, which we are going to need a travel die for him. Yeah. Here's one over here. All right. So, for Cadfael and with our bids, if the high bid is... I think it's more than double. Let me double check here. So if the high bid is more than double the low bid, then the high bidder is going to choose the row they want and then is going to choose a roll for, roll for CAD fail. Um, if the low bid is at least half the high bid, the low bidder um, will choose... Well, so the high bidder will choose the row. The low bidder will choose a row and leave the remainder for cat fail. So basically, you have to bid at least half as much in order to get that benefit. This means, hey, maybe you don't want to roll zero because then you really get, will get what's left. So you should take care when doing that. So um, yeah, we will no longer need the influence dice anymore. So, and now there is no roll, re-roll, any of this sort of stuff. We are just gonna roll whatever we got. So I'm going to roll uh, the top and second row here. This is clearly the second row because I don't have the purple die ready to go yet. Bloop. Wow. These are terrible. Wow. So I'm not bidding on this? Uh, you're bidding on that crap, yes. We're each going to write in a value under number five. Uh, really? Uh, uh, uh. I'm fine with any of it. Are you? Yep. Yeah. It's all bad. It, it's it's not all bad. It's pretty bad. Yeah, it's not all bad. Slap a like. Um, psh, psh, slap a like. All right, that's what I'm gonna bid. Zero. A zero. Wow, I bid huge seven. So wow. Uh, I will. I guess I will take this. And give this to CAD fail. That's what you get right there. Uh -huh. One, two, blue for CAD fail. I am going to go this, this, rotating this to three. Oh, yeah, because you can do the chapel. I forgot. I shouldn't have given that to you. Well, but I did. don't need chapels anymore. Because now you're all the way up. Um, I still have three travels to go. One, two. Three. All right. Did it. All right. Uh, chapel card. Mm. It is a blue. Hey, leader of the chapel. Two. I, nobody can get you now. You have chosen two for the blue. I guess I will have to go three and take it. So that means I have basically bid ten that last round. Dropping like a rock. All right, we got the top row done. Wow, that's a good one. We got the middle row done. Got the bottom row done. 
Hmm. And now we are bidding. Ready? Yep. Three. Four. You do get to take second. So there is there is that. I think I will take this top row here. What? No. What do you mean what? I'm almost to the top of the green track. One, two, three. I get to roll the die to get a random whatever. And I'm to my second city. Red. What kind of crap is that? Cad fail does indeed get a pink and a gray. And he doesn't care to do this. And he does not. He's not going to do this. And he doesn't do any movement actions or anything. You did take your plus one, I'm guessing? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, good. Um, what's this? This is a travel one. I'll bid one. You're a little ways away. That's a long way to get to the next. That's sort of a shortcut. Uh, you're going to bet one. I will... Oh, it's so hard to let you have that. Because... I bid two and take it. It's not great. <laughs> it's not great. So I'm down to 18. 24 minus four minus two more. All right. Rolling two and one for the middle row. Rolling all the rest for the other row. Hmm. What? Hmm. hmm. What do I bid? And see, it's really difficult because every four points, you're basically giving up a point. You know, are you going to get points for what you do? That is the question, right? Yeah. So, yeah. What are you at? What are you at? 32. 30 fracking two? Are you kidding me right now? That's a lot. Let me let me let me tell you, that's a lot. That's something. That's a lot. Alright. Five. Zero. Zero. That's not half. Nope. So I get to ditch a set. Yep. I mean, none of them are great. I might not get to the top of my, at the top, to the top of my uh, column here. <clears throat> yeah, you can, for sure. I can, but do I even want to take, do I even want to take it? You know what I'm saying? I'm not certain. So that would be three movements along the track. That's one, two, three. I'll take it and then I will ditch. Yeah, you're like super close to uh, getting to the top of that. I will let you have that. Yeah. Not what I was expecting. Okay, I can take that. One, 
one, two, and an additional extra. I will adjust. All right, here's my extra bonus roll. A pink? No. The pink helps me none. I was hoping for that green. Oh, I thought for sure you are going to walk the way of the green to get the green. Oh, I guess I could have done that. But you took a roll, so, but yeah. Uh, yeah, I didn't even I didn't even see the green there. No. Yep, I should have. Now that I see it, mistakes were made. Chapel card is a pink. Um. Two. Basically giving you the bonus, likely. Likely giving you the bonus. And you have a lot of points there to burn. You can have it. I can? Yeah. Wow. Oh, the green is already gone as the bonus. Basically, everyone should know what the bonus is left, and it's a chapel walk. You're not going to want it, but you're going to want to keep me from it, I'm sure. I'll roll the top. <clears throat> You'll roll the top because you have it. Yeah. So I will roll the middle and then the bottom. Jeez. Jeez. Well... <clears throat> what do I want to do here? think any of them will give me a chance at getting the green. <clears throat> None of it is confirmed, obviously, but it does give me a chance at it. This was terrible. Are you kidding me? Mm. Mm. Did you do it? No, I'm thinking. Mm-hmm. Okay, what'd you bid? Everyone's very quiet. Ten? Oh, I got eight. And I bid correctly. Yes, you did. Um, I have to do this. It does not hurt you, that's for sure. That is a Dink. five. And you get to choose what you want. Yeah, because I did go over half, so that's good. I will choose this. And that will give me a good work or an extra space. So I will just choose the good work. So I could spend one, two, three and go down to this question mark and roll a die. Uh, no, that is backwards on the path. I can't go down? That is not down towards the last city. All right. Um, let me let me double check the rules. I thought you had to move forward along the track. That would be backwards. Mm -hmm. Start on the travel die. Let's see. Travel die. Move him along the path on the map. Movement must be continuous along path lines.
movement must be continuous along path lines. I I don't know. You can look on the geek. It's fine. I just took that. Continue forward. And then he gets this, which is a red and a gray. And the travels he's obviously not using. So, all right. Would you like to bid for a travel point? Uh, you. I'm going to bid zero. You're going to bid zero? Well, I will certainly bid one. Because that gets me Every roll. a free roll. Mm -hmm. Which will give me something. Which is going to be a gray. It does put me above him. It puts me above him and you. So that is at least something. All right. So uh, now all that's left is the screaming and crying. So um, I bid one. So that means I've got four points left. Um, I got a five point bonus up here. And did you get yours? No. You didn't get your five point there bonus. Was no, there was no there pink. was no pink. Oh, that sucked. Um, I did get to the final city. I didn't get to the final city in the last game we played with this. Neither did I. Chapel. I get one. You get ten. And then we we determine the book lines here. I've got four blue. You've got four blue, which means you get it because you're further ahead in the chapel. Oh, okay, so. That's so you get four times three is 12. I get four times two is eight. And he doesn't score points. He just keeps us from points. I have five gray. He has four. You have three. Therefore, you get four points. I get 12. Um, I have three pink. You have 18,000 pink. He has four pink. I have five points. You have 15. I have all the green, so I am at 12. And you are... Tied with him, which means you get double points. You get eight. It's pretty good. It is pretty good. Uh, you have five reds. I have four. He has three. So I have get four. You get six. Add those up at the bottom. And then add them up along the entire column. No! Oh, 65. No. No. I got, I banked with this. I did really well with those. I, I did, I did fairly well, which you must have had just enough from your little question marks to, to do well. You know, a lot of it was you have, you being tied with him. Him or you getting the tiebreaker because of the church i think chapel. it was him that he was him that one time with the green that gave you four points there Definitely. on the green which would have been dropped you to 61 yeah um so that really did help you a lot yeah so yeah that was good but yeah. i also got tiebreaker for blue for from you. uh oh yeah four four three that is true so that was so far one. behind on chapel i had no no you chance to get up there. No, I mean, yeah. Uh, I thought I might have had you because of the the bonus that you didn't get, but you really did make bank on that bottom column. Um, I think giving you the two extra on the that, I mean that's six points right there. The well, I had plus, to, I had to try for it. Yeah, you had to. And I, that's I why gave you, up two points for it. That's why you held back on all of this. So waiting for the moment. Yeah, to exactly. Just do something about it. Yeah. Plus, you not spending is. I was more free with spending my points. Um, look, look how easy this thing is to erase with these. Even these. I mean, these pins come in everything now. This is super easy to erase. So, just so you guys know, it's not, this is not paper. It, these are little dry erase boards, and this is not something Steph created. This is something that comes in the box. All dry erase should be like this now. Uh, it should be. I mean, I all, mean, all the, rolling rights these all, days. All, well, yeah. I mean, any dry erase. And there's the back side. We haven't played the other side of this. Oh, yeah. Let me uh, show that off. So, not... Yeah, okay, you can do it like this. So not only is there a side A of of your boards, there's a side A to the monastery board, mm -hmm. which if you turn it over to side B, the chapel's on the other side, and you've got different combos of dice. Oh, that's good. With, with the different thing. It's not that you can change one to a chapel. There is, is an extra chapel. chapel. Yeah. There is but you get two and one to three novice movement yeah but you get fewer dice as you notice uh with these down here yes 
With these, you get three book dice, mm. and you can do a reroll. So it's a little diff. All of this is different, and will increase all the variability of your play. Uh, in addition, there is not only this. Uh, there is the B side, which will give you a grid for your novice to travel instead of paths. Look at this. Minus three, minus three, minus three, minus three. Oh, uh, what? Oh, oh, it is minus. So the minus, you remember there was minus uh, threes, twos, and ones on the other side. This one has all minus threes, two steps up. This one is a minus three on the first step, two on the second, one on the third. So these do have completely different playing experiences. But you remember how we were talking about I was going to go down here and take a reroll? Yes. I took the green instead, which got me the tiebreaker, saved me from the minus one. Saved you from the minus so one, which screwed that, you. That was the best thing I could have done anyway. It was, right. Yeah. So, so um, yeah, I, like I, I think this is a keeper. Oh, yeah. I mean. I think so, too. I think you're playing like two, two different games, but it's all very quick and it's very easy though the rules were, were long to explain but it's really not it's it, it really it's not that hard you know i want to make sure you guys got all of everything yeah of course yeah but it's really not that hard to when once you once you see it played you've got it yeah so hey now you don't have to read the rules yay so yeah great game um yep and uh hey look cute, cool little summary on the back i mean everything is everything is super easy to to go through um Oh yeah, look. You see how he like took a, takes a path with this B side. I mean <laughs> yeah, the okay. the the different paths. I mean it's totally different this time. Mm. So we'll have to try it. Um. Oh. Uh -huh. Now this is different. Did we did we do this right? Now this makes me wonder. Hold on just a second. If you enter a space with the book icon, circle the icon and mark off the next space in the matching book stack. That's if you enter a space. Mm -hmm. All right? Yeah. With this, and we, so we did do it correctly. Yes. With this, you draw a line on each space and draw a circle where you stop. Yeah. Okay. So it might not, you might stop. So you notice he, he like hops over this gray mind space, right? Right. He doesn't get it. Mm. Mm. So it's harder. Well, and plus, you can't, I don't think but you can cross lines. But you can, can make lines, your own path. But you can make your own path. So that's path. what's different. Exactly. And there are there are three cities to go to. So yeah. that's, you're still getting two and five and ten. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. Did I get the right number of points for that? Yeah. You got ten. Because you have ten right there. Yeah. I know I got I remember it. seeing your ten, so yeah. Anyway, that was Biblio's Quill and Parchment. Unlike the other Biblioses. But still, <laughs> fantastic. And I don't think this is too hard to add. No. That's so, good. I liked yeah. it. All right, we'll be right back.